Today we held a conference on self-determination and in this conference we paid tribute to one of the exponents of self-determination, the independent uh, expert, Dr. Alfred Dizias. As far as the conflict situations are concerned in Kashmir, Palestine and other places, we find that the only solution to resolve these conflicts is granting the people uh, their right to self-determination so that they can exercise their free will. As far as Kashmir is concerned, uh, I would like to say that at present the situation is becoming very critical and uh, in this situation we find mayhems day by day and we find what we call guns roaring on the ceasefire line and so uh, we need the attention of the international community and we also need the attention of UN mechanisms to, uh, to address this uh, grave concern because Kashmir is a flashpoint and it can lead to a disturbance uh, of peace in that region and also impact the world peace. Therefore, Kashmiris uh, have been promised right to self-determination by United Nations in its Security Council resolutions and Indian government is also committed to uh, provide this right to self-determination to the people of Kashmir this right of self-determination needs to be redeemed to the people of uh, Kashmir so that they choose their political future and have a trust with their destiny. Uh, the issue of self-determination is very crucial. It is crucial from the Kashmiri point of view. We are here at the UN and with the uh, independent expert for the purposes of the realization of the self-determination for the people of Kashmir. They are suffering, they are going through a very difficult period, our leadership is going through a very difficult period, but we hope that the issue of uh, self-determination here at UN Human Rights Council will come to a situation where the, it will be agreed and it will be implemented. I have submitted seven thematic reports to the Human Rights Council and six to the General Assembly, one of them devoted entirely to the issue of self-determination. As a matter of fact, I just spoke in the European Parliament uh, last week on the issue of self-determination, focusing, among others, on the case of Nagorno-Karabakh. But I've also written on the issue of Kashmir. There are many aspirants uh, and many peoples who have a legitimate claim to exercise self-determination. Now, whether the self-determination is going to be in the form of a uh, very generous autonomy, whether it's going to be within a federal state, or whether it's going to be through secession, through uh, the creation of a new independent state, that is really only for the people concerned to decide. And that's why I say it would be very useful if the United Nations would recognize that Self-determination is a conflict prevention strategy. And uh, it is sad to see that the United Nations only did referenda in Ethiopia and Eritrea, in Sudan, and in Timor-Leste, after hundreds of thousands of people have been killed. So the idea is to have a preventative strategy so that you have early warning, you try to mediate, you try to dialogue, you try to have uh, negotiation between minorities with grievances and uh, the governments, and then you organize referenda. Well, the vast majority of tribal governments adopted a resolution in 2005 this follows a reaction of uh, civil resistance since the report came out in 1982 that the indigenous peoples of Alaska still have the right of independence. And this was the first time any information was released concerning our right to self-determination. And so it built up, it took some years because we had to inform ourselves the United Nations failed Alaska. Mm -hmm. They allow apartheid up there. Even one of the US experts of the subcommission admitted this personally to me. 
And so did uh, members of the subcommission said that there's a grave problem in Alaska. They violated not only their constitution, but international law obligations. And so they're sitting on nothing. Yet they're making deals. They want to make a half a trillion dollar mine in my region in Bristol Bay. They've so-called discovered oil in the North Slope, which they say is three times the size of Saudi Arabia. They would like to open up what you call ANWAR, the Alaska National Wildlife Refuge, to oil drilling. And so they've talked to China to get $50 billion to assist them on creating a pipeline to go from the top of Alaska to the bottom or to improve the existing one. So the indigenous peoples of Alaska, it's very clear we're the ones who have the right to exercise self-determination. Mm -hmm. The General Assembly Resolution 1469, 12th of December, 1959, operative paragraph two says, the peoples of Alaska have effectively recognized their self-determination. The peoples of Alaska are not American citizens. Mm -hmm. They are not the military, and there was a Swiss individual who went to Alaska, became a senator. So this is not acceptable. The Alfred Desais said uh, two or three things. He said, reinstate the right to self-determination back on the agenda of the Human Rights Council. Mm -hmm. He recommended several cases go to the UN Decolonization Committee to be reviewed for reinstatement or for placement there. And he also said that the United Nations should change their rules of procedure in order to allow us peoples the right to participate more equally at the United Nations in international standard setting procedures.